I have to fight Hassan Piker. You know who that is? Why do you hate Hassan so much? Jesus. So, Hassan boxing <laughs> match. You've got another match coming up. Have you, do you, have you talked to iDubs at all? Or are you guys like, and just hate each other and it's whatever? Or? I'm really uh, super exhausted just because I've been doing this, these boxing workouts and it's uh, starting to weigh on me and I'm tired of it. What, um, are you allowed to say what event you're training for? Is it publicly announced and all that? It's the, uh, I probably, maybe I shouldn't say it publicly, uh, cause I think it's, I think they're going to announce it next Wednesday. Um, but it's going to be a big one. How long have you been interested in boxing? <clears throat> I'm just curious. Uh, I've been, uh, doing it sort of casually for probably over a year. Um, but I used to do Muay Thai and Jiu Jitsu and all that crap. So, uh, it's sort of, they sort of twine together okay what do you make are you excited that um d did you get like a resurgent interest as like i guess like the influencer world is starting to get into boxing or you mean as idubs took my idea <laughs> no, say, just, hey, however you want to say it I'm but just, yeah i mean i'm just messing around yeah, yeah. but um, i mean like, i mean him jake paul right like the idea that like youtubers yeah, are yeah. getting into not not just him but yeah no it's definitely uh the the age of influencer boxing is upon us. I think, as um, my theory is that as there uh, as there's less and less real stuff for people to do, uh, and as we sort of move our our the American diet moves from uh, food that farmers have to create to crickets, and as the as the real jobs kind of dry up, <clears throat> I think all that's going to be left is. Um, SoundCloud rapping, fighting, and the streaming. So if you're not a SoundCloud rapper, a streamer, or a influencer boxer, you're gonna have a hard time making ends meet. Gotcha, so you're getting ahead of the curve, that's good. Yeah. Um, so you're training for boxing. Do you know anything about me or anything about what I do or anything? I have no idea. I just noticed you follow me on Instagram, that's the only reason I reached out. I, know, I talked to that, um, your buddy that's a football, the NFL guy, I talked to him a little bit. I know, I've heard your name before, I've never, uh, just because I don't watch, I don't watch streams. Like I don't that's watch- That's good, you're making good choice. I don't watch streams, okay? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but I have, I've definitely heard your name before. <clears throat> okay, gotcha. Um, I do, uh, I do like, I, I guess like political stuff is what I'm known for, for the past like six or seven years online. Um, but, but like I have really wide interests, so I'm kind of curious and a little bit of everything. So obviously um, you, you've come up a bit um, insofar as like the trajectory of your online stuff from that. I think the first thing I ever saw of you was the, the college speech you did. Uh -huh. The, uh, and then from there to the adult swim <clears throat> stuff to the everything else that, that's going on afterwards and then watching videos of you and Harley and everything recently has been interesting. Um, mm -hmm. When you, I, I don't wanna like cover a bunch of ground that I'm sure you've covered on a million shows. Just, like briefly speaking, what do you wanna, what do, you wanna do today? Like what is your, what, what's like the perfect place for you? Like, <clears throat> like yeah. I, something that I'm kind of interested about, iDubs kind of covered this when he talks to you, is this like this, this concept of like the infinite irony and then figuring out like, you know, what people's places are in the world. Like what, what is your, what is your like drive? What, like, what, do you want to be like a boxer? Do you want to be like an this, online <laughs> funny guy? Like, do you want to do another show? Like, yeah, what, what, I guess like, what, can I, what is your big drive? It's, this is going to sound like I'm trolling you, but mm -hmm. what I really want to do is I'm trying to save up enough money uh, that, so that I can fund a science fiction video game. <laughs> science? That's, real. That's, that's not a joke though, that's real. That's what I've been, um, my sort of like <clears throat> uh, holy grail magnum opus project that I've been thinking about and um, contributing, contributing writing towards and doing sort of groundwork for for 10 years now is a science fiction video game. What, what kind of science fiction video game? Uh, as far as gameplay goes, it would be, I would, we would try to make it like Skyrim-esque dialogue, side quests, RPG elements, plus Quake style shooting mechanics uh so, with what's that yeah, new game no. they just announced the star <clears throat> fucking whatever it's skyrim in space star fuckers i, I would uh, I, think uh, I don't think that's the official name maybe that was just the is it a bethesda game yeah i think so right oh star starfield maybe yeah so have you ever seen uh, fifth element um bruce willis and the weird girl right mm -hmm. yeah yeah so it would be it w it would be a, a, a hyper stylized, highly aesthetic take on 
science fiction. It wouldn't be the sort of clean, uh, minimal stuff that everybody else does now. It would be like a super dirty kind of... Um, kind of like an alien, aliens vibe, like the really worn down science fiction worlds, yeah? Really worn down, yeah. Kind of, kind of like what Cyberpunk 2077 should have been, in my opinion, instead of like super neon, glossy stuff everywhere. Mm-hmm. Why, I don't associate you at all with video games. Um, do you, have you ever done like video game related <clears throat> content stuff ever? Um, or even no. in like your comedy, I don't hear it referenced much. Yeah, no, it's a it's a very it's a weird thing to uh, tell people because it's so I I get it sounds like I'm making it up to as a joke or something, but that's actually what my ambition is and has been for like a long time for years now. Have you ever tried to like fundraise for this, like off the back of any other projects or anything, or is this just like a personal thing? Or no, because it would take the the funding that it would take would be way higher than what I'm able to crowdfund myself right now. Um, it would probably cost like fucking fifteen million dollars to make. Uh -huh. So I gotta I gotta uh, go do some fights. I gotta do some more podcasting, some more some more cryptocurrency trading. Um, gotcha. On the Rocky Balboa grind, just trying to yeah, yeah. carve out. Gotcha. Interesting. More, it's more the over the top. Have you ever seen over the top? I have not. Uh, man, it's more of an over the top grind. I need that that Volvo sleeper cab truck. Some of your fans will get that. None of them will. Not all. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> There's a few people listening. I'm sure someone will get it. Um, <clears throat> when you so when you look back over kind of like everything you've been involved in. And then you kind of like look at the way that you conduct yourself. I, so I'm 33 and I've been on the internet since I was 12. And obviously I'm sure, have you, well, actually I'm curious, when you were a kid, were you like an internet guy? How old are you? What is your age? 37. You're 37. Have you always yeah. been like an internet kind of person or was that something you got yeah. into? Yeah. <laughs> when, when AOL came out, it was, uh, you had to pay by the hour. And the or you could get those CDs from Burger King with a thousand hours and shit sometimes and pop them in as long as you had the line for it. I, yeah. I think I think it was before that. Okay. It, it was uh, the first month that my family had AOL, I racked up a $900 bill. <laughs> um, so yeah, I've been a, an online person. I'm an extremely online person. So obviously things have changed a little bit mm -hmm. <laughs> in the online world in terms mm -hmm. of like what's acceptable and whatnot. Um, I've done a lot of things that I think are really funny. I've done a lot of things that I think are probably maybe too edgy for today's standards. Obviously, they're way too edgy. Mm -hmm. um, something I kind of, I, I think about a lot. And it's hard, there's like this, especially looking at somebody like you, there's like this balance you have to strike between like what is kind of like your true self and like the thing that you <clears> want to <throat> sell to people, not like in a scummy advertising, but like what do I, what do I want people to get from me mm -hmm. versus um, how much am I, actively contributing to the destruction of my life and the people around me because of how I want to act. Do you ever yeah, think yeah. of like the balancing act between that where you're like, fuck, maybe I shouldn't have talked about Jews on that phone call or maybe I well, should have like done this joke or whatever. Yeah, how do you balance that out? Or do you think about I, that going forward ever? You're just like, fuck it, like just do it all. No, I think the cool thing is that it's, it's like entirely up to you how you want to make those uh, calculations. And um, mm -hmm. like if you want to, there's, uh, that's kind of what makes internet personalities interesting is that there's, there is a supply of people who are willing to destroy themselves for, to make something like semi-interesting or at least interesting enough to watch for 15 minutes, you know? Uh -huh. um, and I think that if, if everybody approached it with the same kind of like, um, and there's, there's people who make good moves and that's fine, but if everybody, if everybody had the exact same sort of calculation when they when they go into it, sort of like the typical Hollywood calculation, where it's like, is this good for my career? Should I really like like you're really sort of micromanaging every thing that you do and say? Then I think it would be way less interesting, you know. So mm -hmm. you kind of have to you kind of have to pick your um, uh, just be aware of that when you if if you're a person that complains about that or if you think that that's out of pocket for people to behave that way. It's like if if everybody was the sort of same kind of sterile and uh, uh, not sterile, but if everybody had the same kind of safety safeties on, you wouldn't get 
you know, videos of people playing in septic tanks and other shit that's sure, really funny. Yeah. <laughs> I would I, I would have agreed with you a while ago. It seems like today the um, everything is really brutal in terms of, I mean, you know this, right? Like the yeah. cross-platform ban shit is insane to where you can yeah, get yeah. like blacklisted on one thing and now you're banned from like Instagram and YouTube and Facebook and um, Twitter. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, it seems like there's a very narrow uh, band for where people are allowed to exist in. And then compared yeah, yeah. to what you were talking about, kind of like the early days of the internet, even YouTube was just like a bunch of pretty wacky, random, wild mm -hmm. things um, compared to like TikTok today, which is like a trillion videos with the same like three pop songs, all like narrowly focused to the same type of Zoomer humor. Feels a little bit sad, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, the, the thing is though, like it's, it's going down, like it's getting worse every day, so if you're at, at some point, it's the, the cancel uh, cancel machine is going to come for people like SXE Phil or like people who, who really don't push the envelope and do stuff that they think is like timid. But YouTube ad, uh, Google AdSense is just going to be like, oh, we don't like you anymore. Mm -hmm. Like you're not you're not driving clicks. You got to go. You're making the platform look bad. I think ultimately what all these platforms want is they want. Um, they want to create like Disney Plus or Hulu or kind of like a, an, an alternative where the content is being made for free almost by people like you and me, mm -hmm. right? Like we're not, we're not getting paid the same as uh, Johnny Depp and Pirates of the Caribbean. But if you add up the, if you add up the views, there are people, people like us who get those kind of views and we're creating a sort of alternative to Disney Plus and Hulu and all these other platforms like are almost for free for fucking one twentieth of the cost, mm -hmm. you know? So that's, um, I think that's what their, what their goal is, <clears throat> partially. Pro yeah, pro yeah, for sure. Um, and then all of it has to be like, it's like family friendly and everything is possible. It's gotta be so clean, can, yeah. Like, serve it to as many different people. Um, gotta yeah. get rid of the bad, ap bad apples. Yeah. Do, um, I noticed you put out like a lot of like, self-help content. Mm-hmm. Do, um, is this something you want to do more of in the future? It's hard to tell, like, what's ironic or what's not. I know you've got your, your debt well, cancellation guide videos. and <laughs> Dude, the, debt, the <laughs> debt, ma debt maxing is real, bro. Yeah. You got you to gotta debt max. That's no joke. That's how, um, that's how you pay for anything that you want. <laughs> yeah, as long as you but don't the, want a house uh, or a car, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. The, um, I mean, most of the advice that comes from a sincere place, there's, there's sort of a, a plague of fatherlessness or people that have really weak weak father figures or non-existent father figures and they they need uh they turn to the internet for for help mm -hmm. so i might as well throw my hat in and say what i say what i can that's useful mm -hmm. um i try not to i try to only speak up if i have something to say that's that's useful but uh so that's why the hide wars videos have kind of been sparser nowadays it's kind of i've kind of said what i've what i think mm -hmm. but there's not really too much more to it do you want to get back into making like skit comedy stuff, like kind of the more formal, like two three minute skits or whatever? Or are you kind of like past that? You don't care as much, or not as much opportunity? Or no, I would love to do that. It's just that that requires a lot of money, mm -hmm. and um, it's also it's so much work that it's not. It's the kind of thing where, if uh, though I could fund it myself and make a some type of profit margin, it wouldn't be enough to justify the amount of work that goes into it. Like it's really that's the, that's the most intense type of uh, work that I am capable of doing, and I'm not gonna I'm not gonna do it for a twenty percent return. Yeah, um, there's always that problem with like, especially because I'm coming from the world of streaming, where it's like the highest amount of money you can make for what is really the least amount of effort. You turn a camera on and go for ten hours and make a, a mm -hmm. too much money, versus the prepared content where you have to work so hard to like. You know, hopefully you get a video with two hundred thousand views. Meanwhile, the yeah. guy streaming has gotten you know like fucking tens of thousands of dollars <laughs> just like you know shitting into a camera. <laughs> while, yeah. yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Do um in in terms of the are are you like perma banned from YouTube like forever? Like, did they keep banning new channels, or did you just lose one? Or because I know you've got a couple uh, that like no, they have um our main channel. Our two we have two channels that are not monetized. We have uh, Hide Wars and Million Dollar Extreme Two. Mm -hmm. And then uh, there's a bunch of re-uploaders that put clips, and the clip, the clip channels are monetized. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if that's because they haven't been noticed by YouTube, or if because there's someone at YouTube working there that's really passive aggressive and knows that I'm not getting money from it, mm -hmm. and lets it slide. I don't, I don't know. But uh, 
those channels don't seem to have a problem with monetization. It could be that the channels that we have are, they're, because they're old, they could have like some type of flag on them from back in the day that prevents them from being monetized. Mm -hmm. Do you, do you ever, um, you've never been on like Joe Rogan or anything, right? No. Do you ever think you could, if you do well with like the, kind of like the East no, think, boxing stuff, or are you too? I think I might be, I think I might be too spicy for Rogan. A little bit too spicy, gotcha. Yeah. He's, uh, he's seen my stuff. He's, he had a uh, Duncan Trussell showed him my, uh, my videos, he thought it was funny, but um, I think it might be too spicy for him. Sure. Is that, going forward in the future, is that something you, do you think you're as spicy now as you used to be, or do you think you kind of like mellow it out a little bit, as people do when no, they get I've, older, you think? I kind of, I've kind of realized the futility of, uh, of uh, what, that type of stuff, at least at this point in my life. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm, I've just been generally, I've been sort of more blackpilled about the direction that everything is going and um i think it's unrealistic that anything i can anything i would do or say would help turn it around mm -hmm. uh so i might as well just not shoot myself in the face anymore yeah I, yeah I, yeah i guess i kind of was going on with my first question i was kind of curious how you viewed um the, it's it's very strange, I guess. I say it's strange, but we're kind of used to it now, I guess, and that like everything on the internet is so unbelievably permanent. And it's not just what you've said that's permanent, it's the, the worst interpretations possible of you are permanent. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and they're, yeah, you basically can't move off of them at all. Well, I think, that's, I think that, that, doesn't, that doesn't bother me so much. I mean, I think that's okay, because mm -hmm. people tend to, once, once stuff is out of the news cycle, it doesn't really, it doesn't have as much of an effect. And, um, like I, I wouldn't be able to be on Adult Swim anyway. Mm -hmm. Like even if the, even if those articles were never written, it, it can, can you imagine the type of content that I make on Adult Swim like right now, with this all the stuff that's going on? It just wouldn't fly. Yeah, I'm actually I'm kind of curious what because I, I I just I haven't watched TV in so long. Does Adult Swim even do like a lot of the surrealish comedy anymore or? Because I feel like I when I think a lot of those old shows, like Aqua Teen Hunger Force or C-Lab 20, like, would, would, I don't know if those shows would survive today. Yeah. So I think our show got on there at the last possible moment that a show like that could be on Adult Swim. And I think, um, like, if I, had, if I had not said and did what I said and did, mm -hmm. maybe, it, maybe it could have gone on for another... Like another season, maybe? Yeah, another season, another two seasons. Uh -huh. But it, it would have been, been canceled. Um, most certainly. I mean, even before I, even before I said that stuff, um, when we were making it, one of the executives at Adult Swim tried to break into our editing suite and destroy the footage. Like she, uh, she did it with, with in front of cameras. She, she like fucked up the door lock and got fired because of it. But Jesus. Um, even even before. I had said anything kind of outrageous. Uh, mm -hmm. There were there were people there trying to fucking undo our our work and destroy the show that they paid a million dollars for. Were you um, so prior to so I've heard <laughs> I've heard the phone call, um, which I'm assuming is what you're referring to the talk with the journalist guy about. Um, I, yeah, yeah, I think, yeah. That was, yeah. Before prior to that, had had you made many statements like politically that people could take issue with, or was it all just related to kind of like the comedy stuff you'd done? Because I hadn't really I heard much was, politically about you until that that phone call. It was it was mostly comedy and like t maybe two Reddit posts posts that someone digged up. Uh -huh. But I've never I've never been like a uh, like a Steven Crowder type, like a a guy that's like overtly political. Like it's not mm -hmm. my role. I don't I don't make like political commentary or talk about uh, or do that kind of stuff necessarily. I, I started doing that on Twitter, but it's just that wasn't like my brand before mm -hmm. that point, you know. Yeah, it definitely seems like, um, I, I guess, like in the Trump world and then post-Trump, like basically everybody, whether you like it or not, everybody is a political figure. And you have to have yeah. a political opinion on every single thing you do. Um, and it got a little bit weird because prior to, did you ever read Maddox growing up? 
Yeah, I did. Yeah. yeah regardless of what you think about him now, um, the, the Maddox site was funny. Um, or at yeah. least I thought it was growing up. But the um, it's hard to do anything like that because every it feels like every statement you make, um, whether you're joking or not, there is like so much loaded like political implication behind it. And then mm -hmm. that gets associated with you. You get associated with that. And then the most extreme versions of that are attributed to you. And then you're just kind of like fucked. Yeah. 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 No, that's very true. Do you ever when when it comes to like um. So I don't, I don't actually, I don't know anything about you personally. I truly don't. Cause it's, it's obviously, and I, I know it's part of what you do, but it's hard to tell like what's real versus what's not. So I don't really know like any of your personal, like social or political positions. So I guess okay. as I asked, I'm kind of curious when you do, um, when you do content or you engage in like certain types of humor, have you, has there ever been a moment where like you look at your audience and you're like, fuck, like I thought this was funny, but I kind of don't like how people are taking it. Or, you know, I wish I would have mm. done this a little bit differently. Or do you just like, you know, fuck it. If people engage with it in an irresponsible way, that's on them. Like, how, do you ever view that at all or? Yeah, all the time, of course. Mm -hmm. I think that um, there's, whether, uh, no matter what comedian you're talking about, there's like always a sort of a calculation. There's multiple calculations that are like, am I punching down? Am I targeting someone that doesn't deserve to be targeted? Am I making a joke that's going to like, is the amount that this joke is going to piss people off more than the amount that it's funny? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And that's sort of like, that's kind of my problem with a lot of, um, uh, with a lot of humor. Like there's a, uh, there's a like, fuck. Like when black, black comedians make a, a joke that's at the expense of white people, mm -hmm. that's sort of what, that's the way I think about it is, is this funnier than it is pissing me off? And if it's funnier than it's pissing me off, then it's like, in my opinion, that's a good joke. And that's like a, a well-crafted thing to say. And if the opposite is true, I'm just like, oh, this guy hates white people. Fuck this guy. Sure. You know? Yeah. So that's, that's always something that I'm self-conscious of myself when I'm um, saying shit is you never, you never want to be, you never want to be, <clears throat> you never want the meanness and the making fun of people and hurting people's feelings. You don't want that to like not or outweigh the funniness of it i think I yeah mean, no i yeah yeah there are times when i hear edgy humor and i'm like that was yeah, really yeah. i don't think it was funny <laughs> enough for how edgy it is and then there's other yeah, jokes yeah, where it's yeah, like that's yeah. a really bad joke but it was funny enough to skirt by. Like, that's gonna, yeah, <laughs> yeah for sure um yeah. and then i um i've heard of I, I it feels like almost every like comedian um will do engage in certain types of humor and then later on they're like fuck i pushed it too far i know listening to um, Dave Chappelle on Oprah talking about some skits. He talks about getting a certain type of laugh from a white guy and he's like, oh shit, I think this guy was laughing at me. I don't feel good about this. Um, yeah. Or Chris Rock has walked back kind of like his, the really famous skit, black people versus niggas or whatever and everything. So yeah, like, yeah, um, yeah it, se it seems like, and it's kind of funny because I remember watching this stuff in 2013 and I would always think like, oh, I'm never gonna be a sellout. Like I'm a cool dude. Um, and then as I get older, I'm like, fuck, like, I don't know. Some of this stuff maybe is too edgy or it's, it's, it gets really hard to tell when you start looking at audiences and how they engage with the humor and everything too. Does it, when I, when I think of your audience online, I could be wrong, maybe it's different in different areas, but like I think of an audience that tends to be pretty, a lot more socially conservative than like the, the obviously like the super woke people. Um, but even even maybe a little bit more than kind of like where the, the norm is right now in terms of like American social politics. Does that, do you care about that at all? Or are you just like, fuck it, like I do humor. Um, I don't give a fuck about this kind of shit. Well, I think what's important is to, um I think it's a bad idea to look back on like Chris Rock walking back his routine that he did back mm -hmm. in the day. Yeah. I think it's I think it's a mistake to look back on material that you did at a certain point in time and that at that point in time you thought it was the best the best possible move. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's a mistake to try to reanalyze that under, you know, today's contemporary uh, standards of course, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think that's a mistake. That's all I would say about that. Mm -hmm. For sure. Uh, I'm uploading something right now that's a sneak preview of something really funny that I think you'll like. Fuck! Hold on a second. Okay, no problem. Um, okay, you're gonna like this. <laughs> Can you, uh... Is this gonna get this to be in uh, Skype, or what am I looking for? I'll send you a chat here. Yeah, they're on Skype, yeah. <clears throat> um... Actually, can you wait a second? Don't lo don't load that one. Let me give you a different one. Okay, sure thing. You're gonna love this. Gotcha. That's it right there. Peeing Michael. This is our new thing. This is your new thing. Yeah. 
Okay. Some of the uh, some of the ultra absurd humor gets away from me a little bit, so I'll try my best. Um, do you want me to watch this on stream so everybody can see it? Or yeah, you got to watch it on stream, man. Do you like me? I know I am bad, but I would feel better if you said you like me. Will you say it now into the computer screen so I feel feel better? Say you like peeing, Michael. Say you like peeing, Michael. Please say it now. If you don't say it, I'll kill you with a plastic bag full of pee pee. I'm peeing, Michael. God, is like it still me? playing? Yeah, we just finished it. Man, that was a <laughs> that was a video for sure. That was. <laughs> Now, what did you think of the visuals? Because your your fans didn't get to see the visuals. They didn't get to see the visuals. Now, maybe the visuals would have sold it harder. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, I'm not entirely sure. You know, some of the some of the humor on the <clears throat> internet's moved past me. So. Yeah. <laughs> but is this uh? Well, no no worries if you don't like it, man. No, it's I understand. all good. Listen, I'm, I'll be. I'm, I hope your boxing goes better. Let me say that. Hey, okay. thank thank you very much. <laughs> the um. Jeez. Yeah, that's what I've been working on lately. Yeah? Yeah. Solo project? you do the animations yourself? No, that's uh, my buddy Miles McGrady did the 3D animation. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay. Yeah. Anyway. Anyway. Um, fuck, I don't know what else to fucking ask you. Yeah, that really derailed it, huh? <laughs> yeah, my bra I'm just... The plastic so bag thread at the end just really got to me. You know, like I don't know if I don't know if I need to be worried. You know, brain reset. Sorry about that. <clears throat> do you feel? Do you still have like a lot of like friends and connections that you can like move around? Like where are you at right now? What city are you in? Providence. Gotcha. And I've had uh, my crew that I work with. They've been with me for three, four years now. Okay. Do you so we've we've got a tight knit little group here. Gotcha, gotcha. Do you um? Do you ever worry sometimes with the? Are there ever times you want to be serious? You're worried that people will never understand you're being serious, like with your self-help stuff. Mm -hmm. I think I think most of the people who look at that and listen to it, they they get that it's serious. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't really feel the need to put too many disclaimers. I think it's also kind of evident when I start laughing my ass off at something I said that it's not intentional and not something that you should uh, something yeah, you should take with, a grain of, sure. take with a grain of salt yeah what is there when you is there like a dream collaboration you have is there like somebody like obviously aside from your favorite character iDubs um, is there somebody that you like really want to do something with if you have the opportunity to yeah I have to fight Hassan Piker you know who that is <laughs> that's my arch nemesis you have no idea okay. I created Hassan well, Two years ago I have on Twitch, but yeah. All, all jokes aside, I know that you guys are not going to take me seriously when I say this stuff because it's like better to fuel drama or whatever. But when I joined Twitch for the first time, I had a very specific goal in mind. And that goal has come to fruition largely because of Destiny, because of the help that he's uh, given me. And also on top of Destiny, uh, helping me personally, Destiny himself already doing exactly what I wanted to do. So when people like David Pakman decide to come on Twitch or people like Kyle Kalinske decide to come on Twitch, this is an incredible thing. I love this. Uh, the the alt-right have an absolute hold, a stranglehold on... Two years ago I have on Twitch, to, but yeah. You, you created him, I have to kill him. Well, if you're trying to fundraise for that, uh, I would absolutely help you. <laughs> Do any of my, he's been training. Did you see his Twitter videos? He's kicking... I've, I've seen his training videos. Yes, there. It was illuminating to watch him kick the pad with such ferocity. Well, you got to sound. You have to sound scared, okay? You don't want to oversell your confidence to scare him. Yes. Out of there. Yeah. Do um. <laughs> wait, how tall are you? You're aren't you? You're like fucking six five or some shit, aren't you? Six six four and a half. Oh, okay, gotcha. Well, have you reached out to him or his people? To... Yeah, we've reached out. We've we've communicated. Uh, I've talk to people intermediaries who've talked to him about this mm -hmm. topic um his <clears throat> his uh excuse was that he couldn't platform me by accepting a fight he wouldn't want to make me uh, lend some of his fame and clout to me mm -hmm. uh so what i have to do is i have to go do a fight that's going to be seen by 10 million people and then call him out at the end and platform him which I will do in August. Have you thought about the call out yet? 
Uh, yes, I have a I have a whole little routine that rhymes. Some of it rhymes that I'll I'll be getting into. When you um, for you doing this, is this like a fun thing? Is it like a popularity thing, or do you just want money? Uh, no, it's because I hate him. Okay. Do you know how to? I don't know if you've thought of this yet, but if you yeah. if you when you're doing the call out. Like yeah. the killer move is if you can get like a seven figure purse or something, I don't know how much you could raise for the fight, but if you could get a lot for the fight, you have to mm. say, Hassan, we need to fight and 80% of the proceeds or whatever are going to go to like mm. some fucking LGBT charity or some shit or some trans charity yeah. to fight. And like, cause then you put the onuses on him to like, are you going to turn down $4 million for we, trans kids being detrans by DeSantis in Florida or some shit? Like you, that would be, it would kill her call out. We did that. We did that. We put uh, one of my one of my friends, who's a crypto crypto rich guy, mm -hmm. set aside uh, set aside two million dollars of Bitcoin to a an um, an address. Like he proved that he had ownership of this this Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. And there was a uh, a DAO, a distributed autonomous organization. They they put up five hundred thousand, and um, we so we raised two point five million dollars that Hassan could have donated to a charity of his choice. Uh, if he won a fight with me. Oh, damn. And he, he turned it down. He ignored it, yeah. I think he so was. It's, it is a risk for him because I think if he lost you, I think he would kill it's himself. A, I think he would commit suicide. It's a huge suicide. risk. It would be the end of his <laughs> existence. Yeah, it would be pretty it would be bad. the worst so. thing he'd ever done. Um, I would try to give him irreparable brain damage <laughs> and... Uh, Fucking, I'd keep punching him until I got pulled off by the referee. I would, just try, I would try to hurt him as bad as possible. Why do you hate Hassan so much? Uh, just cause. There's no reason. No reason. Not a political know, one. Not a you hate Turkish not people. Really. Not a just just fucking Hassan. There's, I mean, there's tons of there's tons of his political opinions are the safest political opinions. So there's a million people like him that have the same opinions as him that I could get mad at. So that's not it. Mm -hmm. It's just uh. With him, it's like, his, so his muscles, his use of steroids, his, his uh, bodybuilding activity, what that is, is an, it's an implicit, uh, it's part of an implicit statement that my ideas are correct because I'm, I can physically overpower you, right? Uh -huh. Like he's, he's the left wing alpha male. And that's, that's the way it should be. The weak should fear the strong. They should uh, <laughs> obey people who are stronger than them. Um, however, if he's not willing to back it up with his fists in a fight with me, then it's completely useless. And it's it's uh, it's at that point, it, all that effort that he puts into developing his body just turns into cowardice. I do can't you, abide that. I can't watch that. Do you, you really think he's that. been? Uh, do you really think he's been on gear before? Is that something you feel strongly about, or hasn't he? Hasn't he admitted it? Oh shit, has he? Fuck. I think. I, I think he's. I think he did a cycle. Yeah, that's okay. That's fine. Sure. Um, <clears throat> but he's got to use it for something. Gotcha. Damn. So you just want to? I want to fuck him up. Are you going to take over as like the leftist fucking like maybe head I will. afterwards? Are you going to come and be like, this is for socialism or some shit? Get, go yeah, go into the ring with like some Che Guevara trunks or something, you know? I mean, why not? Why not? I should take over. I should have, I should have Grimes sitting next to me. <laughs> On your stream. Absolutely. Yeah. I bet she'd love to watch the uh, peeing Michael video. Get her live She's reaction fucking... to it. Yeah. Listen, if Grimes was next to me right now, she would love everything that I do. She would just be... She would be captivated by my pheromones immediately. Yeah. She'd have no choice but to watch peeing Michael several times. Jesus. So Hassan boxing <laughs> match. You've got another match coming up. Have you? Do you? Have you talked to Idubs at all, or are you guys like fucking just hate each other and it's whatever? Or? I've only talked to him to get my refund from the um, tickets. Did you get your claimed. money back at least, or? I got my money back from the tickets. I didn't get my money back from the the airfare though. Oh. Damn. Gotta go. I gotta go see him in person. And extract that money. <laughs> yeah, but, uh, yeah. You know he care, he cares so much about charity that he refunded me my ten thousand dollars worth of front row tickets. Uh, so that's ten. That's ten thousand that a charity didn't get mm -hmm. because he he was upset that I would be sitting there. Cheer, uh, quite frankly, cheering him on and helping him win. Okay, I'm gonna. I'm gonna make a big read. Okay, and I could mm -hmm. be wrong. I think I said this on stream when I watched it. 
Mm-hmm. So, and I don't even know you that well, so I'm totally wrong. Could be cringe. So, I think you you come off to me as a person that can be you're highly ironic, like really goofy, a lot of the time. I feel like, and I could be wrong. It's just a feeling I get. I feel like when you need to be serious, you have to be serious. You could do that, but mm-hmm. I also feel like most people would never believe that. So, are you? I guess. I asked you a question earlier about like, are you ever worried that kind of your ironic stuff is maybe too much and people can't tell when you're being serious? And then I look at like, I think you would have really liked to have been at the event cheering on Harley and everything and those frequencies. Yeah. That would have been a lot of fun. Um, and, but, I, but even I, because I have to be honest, like I would be like, if somebody were to ask me, bet money, is Sam Hyde going to do some wacky shit to make this event about himself? I'd be like 50-50, and I'm not sure. I don't think he would, but he absolutely <laughs> could. And if you told me he did, it wouldn't surprise me at all. Like, yeah, you know, it sounds like some, yeah, I just probably shouldn't let him in. Like, what the fuck was he thinking, you know? So, yeah, I guess when it comes to situations like that, you're like, fuck, like, I wish there was a way to signal that, like, you know, I, like, there's something I really wanted to be a part of, and now I kind of, you know, I, for whatever reason, it's fucked up. Well, he, he wouldn't have let me go anyway, because, mm-hmm. I mean, it's just, it's all rooted in this kind of weird jealousy and obsession with me that he has but the the only prank that we were going to pull which we did pull was we had like 30 people wearing these shirts in the in the crowd yeah yeah i saw which uh, they like watched 100. your video um of the people there was like a fucking 100 out. people mm-hmm. but they told the uh they had the cameramen avoid an entire section of the crowd because there were too many Sam Hyde shirts in that part of the crowd so that's why it's not shown mm-hmm. um but that's all we were going to do but uh, I think I don't think being uh, the, the the mixed messages and the the irony and the seriousness I don't think that that was the the problem I think the problem was just that Idubs um, really does not like me. Yeah. Does, yeah. Is there? Fuck. I don't I don't keep up with all the YouTuber stuff as much. Aside from um, I guess like the show that you did um, with him where he came out to interview you. Is there like bad blood between you guys like publicly or anything or? Not not with not with me. He was. Uh, I guess he was upset about me flagging his video back in the day uh, and telling him to, to squat 225 pounds. But um, he, he, came out, he came out to punk me and he, got, uh, he, did not, he was not successful. Listen, here's the, here's the real thing. Um, so you know he was getting a lot of shit from, uh, I talked about this on the PKA podcast, but the, he was getting a lot of shit from 4chan and Poll mm-hmm. about, his, about being a cuck. About having a girl that does oh, because Anesia does, yeah, yeah. So, if if you're getting that kind of heat, you can't really like, like, what's he gonna do? Go post on 4chan and be like, I'm not the cuck, you're the cuck. Like, that's not really how it works. So, what his in his mind, what he thought would be the best move would be to take me, because I'm posted on there from time to time. I'm sort of like the most, one of the most representative people of that, mm-hmm. his idea was to take me and knock me down a peg so that he could point to them and be like, hey, look, I took your your guy, I made him look like an idiot. Suck it, I'm not a cuck. That's what he, that's what he was aiming to do when he came out here, which I knew from the, the minute he emailed me because he did that at like the height of him getting shit for dating Anissa. Mm-hmm. Um, you, for... Um... So you think it's all just a ploy to be like the bigger cuck or the smaller cuck, I guess. If, I, if, I, cuck. if I cuck Sam Hyde, then I can't yes. be. Okay, interesting, yes. gotcha. Um, I don't know enough about him to know if that's true or not, but I, I can see that interpretation, I guess. He's um, very, uh, he's very like plotting. Like he plots shit out. Okay. And uh, he said, one of, my, one of my crew members heard him say when he came to shoot uh, the, all that stuff, he said, um, I'm usually the puppet master in this type of situation. And he was like sulking and like mad sitting in his car. Oh, because he I, felt cause like I, he got, he got punked yeah, on he, the interview. Because he didn't, he didn't get to prank me. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Do you, the impression I got from watching his video is it seemed genuine, but obviously I, I'm not in your guys' world as much, so I can't tell. Maybe that's part of what he wanted to sell or maybe not, but. This is really, this is a a minutia point and it's really weird. Uh But one one thing he did after his plans backfired, he was sitting in his car, like pouting basically. And he he took his soda and held it out the window and he went like this. And like slowly poured it out, which was very weird. (laughs) 
<laughs> okay. Was it one you gave him? Maybe you just didn't trust the drink. No, it was one that one, yeah. I don't. I don't drink soda. Sure, gotcha. Do you um for I guess on the on the boxing stuff I guess because I'm interested. Have you thought about? Have you put out any more public challenges to people aside from? I guess you're doing one fight now to kind of build. Um, well, yeah. I don't. I don't really want to because uh, the training's really hard. I don't want to be. I don't want to fight a bunch of people. Mm -hmm. I want to do. I'm going to do this one, and this one's going to be at a huge event, and um, hopefully that will mean that the next one is either with Hassan or for like a lot of money. Gotcha, gotcha. Um, and if that's the case, you know, I'll, I will call out Hassan or I'll just call out whoever makes the most uh, business sense. But I'm not, I'm not super interested in um, doing a bunch of fights. Okay. So this is like a, a year or two top send for you, and then you just want to be done with it, basically? Or hope, I hope so, yeah. If Hassan doesn't accept, there's another YouTuber called Vosh, okay? You'd love to box that guy. <laughs> I think I think Vosh is maybe a little too small, though. <laughs> yeah, maybe. I just want to see him get the shit beat out of him, but, you know. <laughs> um, <laughs> in terms of, like, uh, in terms of content, the... Uh, I don't know if you guys have released more than, like, that seven-minute video, or, or it was a short video with you training Harley. That mm. type of shit would be really funny to watch. I don't know if you know that, right? Like training like fucking like Twitch streamers or YouTube streamers to box, like doing like a yeah. three to six month boot camp and then doing like a super cut from that would be really fucking funny content. Um, we got, there's another kid here, uh, Brandon Buckingham. Have you heard of him? Nope, but I don't know anybody. He's, so. he's, a, he's a YouTuber. He's, um, he's getting really big. He's got like 200K subscribers now. He just uh, is getting a lot of heat right now, but he's coming here and I'm training him to mm -hmm. fight. Mm -hmm. Um, in October, hopefully. Okay, cool, cool. So yeah, we're we're doing a little cut of that. Gotcha. But it's it is it is difficult though to keep uh, balance between making funny content and like doing serious training. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, because if you're seriously training, I guess you don't want to just be fucking around the whole time or something, right? Yeah. When Harley came, it was pretty easy because Harley's such a veteran. YouTuber, mm -hmm. uh, and he, he had a really good cameraman, his friend Brian, with him, who was just really good. Mm -hmm. um, so they kind of the, the video kind of made itself. I mean, I'm sure it was a lot of effort on their part, but we were able to focus on training successfully. Mm -hmm. um, but with a regular person, that might not be the case. To, when, in terms of like, um, is is Harley the first guy you've ever like trained for boxing before? Yeah. Gotcha. Was it enjoyable for you? Did you like it, or was it frustrating, or? It was cool. It was real, a lot of fun. Uh huh. Have you really fun before that? Had you ever boxed before, or why did you feel like you wanted to train somebody in boxing? No, because um, I knew I would do a good job. <laughs> uh, the thing is uh, about like I've been to a lot of uh, I'm like a bigger guy, and I've been to a lot of gyms, and I know that what happens is you go to a gym, and your coach is like five foot ten. He's gonna teach you stuff that a person that's five foot ten should do, mm -hmm. which is very, very different from what a person that's six foot six should do. It's like an extremely different thing. Like if you have to, uh, if you lose ten pounds, you might need to relearn how to pivot properly. Mm -hmm. Like it's not the same. It's once your body changes, it's not the same movement. Sure. Um, so that's I think that's what my primary advantage was when when training Harley was I just knew what it was like to be huge. Gotcha, gotcha. Do you think that um, post you doing the boxing stuff and then not having to work out a condition for that, do you think that's still something you want to be involved in, or are you like going to close that chapter forever? Like, I'm not, I'm not doing anything related to boxing anymore. I think only if I was able to make serious money doing it, which I don't think I I would be able to. Mm -hmm. So I think it's uh, I think it's definitely a chapter that's going to get closed pretty soon here. Gotcha, gotcha. <clears throat> well, damn. Well, listen, if there's you, anything, what um, about what about you? Are you going to do an influencer fight? <laughs> Um, I just recently got into like gym related stuff. I'd say about a year ago, pretty seriously. Um, mm -hmm. But I'm like a perma, like 315 low T, fucking very inactive lifestyle for my whole life until I was like 32, mm -hmm. 33. Um, if I, I think, honest to God, watching it, it looks like a lot of fucking fun. I think like mm -hmm. in a year, I could see myself being like, if there was another dude that was like in my similar level of shape, I think it'd be mm -hmm. fun. I don't want to get fucking annihilated. Um, yeah. But like, it seems like it would be a lot of fun. Maybe, who knows, maybe in six months, maybe in a year, if somebody wants to, to train with me for content for like three months or something against somebody, that'd mm. be pretty fun. Um, I'm also a lot shorter too though, so I don't think you could train me. I'm 5'8", you know, I don't know if, mm. I don't know if you could teach me to pivot the right way, you know? Well, we could, we figure it out. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. Um, I'll shave my. I'll, I'll get my shins shortened. Yeah. Okay. Wow. So I can Dedication. empathize better. Yeah. Uh, um. Damn. Okay. Well, dude, if you ever need help uh, reaching out to or promoting or anything, I just I really want to see Hassan get beat up. That that would probably be the funniest thing I've ever seen in my entire life. I don't think he'll ever accept though. But he won't. But if you can, if there's anything you can think of, <laughs> suppose supposedly he's signed to Creator Clash Two and he's gonna do a influencer fight with Creator Clash Two. Um, so if he's in the if he's in the fighting world, mm -hmm. his his ability to ignore me is gonna be less and less. Mm -hmm. But uh, anything you can think of, I'm I'm obsessed with uh, <laughs> with, fight. with with you should probably with if I give you one piece, <laughs> I should probably tone that down a little bit because that's gonna make it a, a lot more scary. You know, you yeah. come off as way more wholesome. Get like some rainbow colored trunks for the next fight. You know, maybe shave, okay. look a little bit more family friendly. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. You know, stop hitting people before the ref has to pull you off. I'm probably that's true. Have a higher chance of getting them in the ring, but. <clears throat> um, Oh yeah, and if you're bringing up anything related to this song, don't ever mention my name because he will absolutely never talk to you because we fucking okay. hate each other. So don't ever do that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, damn. Anything else you want to cover? I guess or no, I think that's I think that's it, brother. Cool. All right. Well, hey, good luck. You said you're training twice a day now for your yeah boxing show. Ah, uh, tired. <clears throat> yeah, damn. Well, good luck, dude. Good luck in Providence. Right, good luck in your fighting, and I'll talk to you later, man. Good luck. Thanks a lot, Destiny. Bye. Peace. Was interesting.